Listo, estamos. Okay. We cannot hear you, Gurudev. Now you can hear me. Yes. It's just a little button I forgot. Boom, boom, boom. Hare Krishna. So, um, I have to do something after class that I don't have time to do, so I had to do it before class, so I'm a little late. Better late than never, right? And I... I was reading something this morning. We're going to begin a class with reading because it relates. Two things relate directly. One thing sort of relates. And if you're wondering what my shirt says, stop wondering. Now you can see. Hold on. 
Oh. To get it straight. And don't go away, I have something to show you. Anurada, look at. Wow, it's amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> and this can be your, if you go to Satwa Dash Apparel, myspreadshirt.com, you can design your own bottle from all the sayings we have. You can't really see it because this microphone's in the way. Rabbi, I yeah, share some pictures of you wearing that. So all yeah, those I mean, pictures all over Facebook and Instagram already in Spanish and English. I think Russian also. Yeah. We have to design them in Spanish. Yeah. So, Adi wants to, Adi Shakti wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah, do it. So you can still hear me like this. It's okay. Good enough. Then you can see the. Keep the advertising going. Um, you know, I often thought that not only should you do shirts like this, you should do all kinds of clothing and have little embroidered sayings. Then everywhere you go, people can learn about Krishna. So um, we're going to begin by reading a few things that I found this morning that would be relevant. Um, I've marked the pages. Um, I have to. Um, I have to then remember what I read. <laughs> I have to find it. So you have to give me a moment. But it relates to. Um, ha ha ha! Listen to this. Oops. So Jamuna Devi tells a story. Prabhupada was doing a bhajan, and um, she was listening outside his room. And then he came out and saw her and said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm listening." Prabhupada said, "Come in." Okay, so it comes from it begins there. Do you want to come in and listen? I said, yes, very much. He said, you can play drum and I will play harmonium and Purushottam can play kartals. Then for several mornings, we recorded Srila Prabhupada singing a prayer by Narottam Das Thakur, Hari Hari Bipale. Manusha Janama Apaya Radha Krishna Nabhajiya Janiya Shunya Bisha Gano Excuse me for that croaking. When I heard Srila Prabhupada sing this, I said, What does this prayer mean? because we didn't have songbooks at the time. He explained the meaning to me that, O oh Lord Hari, I have wasted my life. Although I have taken a rare human birth, like a miser, I have not served Radha and Krishna, and thus I have knowingly drunk poison. When Srila Prabhupada sang this bhajan, he went so deeply into the mood of this prayer that, quote, I have not served Radha and Krishna, 
that he repeated this line eight, nine, ten times. Wow. Radha Krishna na. What is it? Paite nai. Hari Hari Bipala Janamakaino. Manusha Janamapai. Radha Krishna na bhajiya. Radha Krishna na bhajiya. Over and over. And I have not served Radha and Krishna. Interesting. Help us kind of get into the mood of this, understand the mood. Then he sung the next. Uh, the next verse eight or ten times going deep into its meaning. Golokera prema dana harinam shankirtana. Ratinad janmilo hene thai shamsara bishanale diva nisha hiya juale juraite na koino upati. upati. Quote, the treasure of divine love in Goloka Vrindavan has descended as the congregational chanting of the Lord's holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Why did my attraction for this chanting never come about? Day and night, I'm burning in this dark world without working to make the correction. After he sang this song, Prabhupada said, so Jamuna Prabhu, Ooh, did you hear that? He called her Prabhu. Did you hear that Tanya Prabhu? He called her Prabhu. We can have a debate about this for the next 10 classes. To Prabhu or not to Prabhu? That is the question. Um, we have better things to talk about, I think, don't we? Jyotirmai, probably. More interesting things to Prabhu or not to Prabhu. Kind of like, not that important. I mean, you know, it's a cultural thing, but. Now, we could talk about the cultural differences and. That's a nice topic. Okay. So, Jamuna Prabhu, what is your favorite prayer? I only knew the prayer from the introduction to the Suma Bhagavatam. So I said, I like the six Shastika prayers. He said, That's very nice. I said, Swamiji, what is your favorite prayer? He said, This prayer, Hari Hari Bipale. There you got it right from Jamuna's. Words. I said this was Prabhupada's favorite song and that he told George Harrison to sing this. Now we hear it from Prabhupada. So that's that. And so we'll go to the next one. Hmm. Hmm. So I have to find what it is. Um, I have to remember why I, yeah. Uh, hmm. Actually, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, 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 this is nice. I don't, I just, I don't know if it relates to what we're talking about. When I was reading it, I was thinking it related to it. Let's see if it does. Um, uh, hold on one second. Anyway, let's read this story. Whether it relates or not, it's a beautiful story. So the devotees were all in Vrindavan, and then they went to Delhi, and they were in the airport. So the plane was delayed, and we were sitting in a little group waiting. And we heard this click, 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 
click, click, click, click, click. It was a lady in high heels. This is 1975 in India. It's not, it's not so common. Uh, not only high heels. Um, she was about 20 years old, and she had black stockings and a mini skirt. And Shanda Sundar said to Prabhupada, you know, it was like, this was like a reminder, oh, we're in Delhi, we're not in Vrindavan anymore. You know, it's like, look at, you know, you don't see this in Vrindavan, we're not in Vrindavan anymore. And guess what Prabhupada said? Prabhupada looked at him and said, yes, we are in Vrindavan. This is not Vrindavan. Isn't that interesting? That made a light bulb turn on in me that yes, you leave Vrindavan, but Vrindavan is also in the heart. We can drink in Vrindavan using all our senses. And when we leave the Dham of Vrindavan, we can bring its atmosphere with us wherever we go. I don't know why I put that in. Maybe I just thought that was interesting. Let me see what my thought process was. Um, well, um, I don't know what it was actually, but I think the the thought process here is obvious. The Vrindavan is not a place, it's a state of consciousness and according to how you see things, I think, oh, this is horrible. We're in the material world. We are, We're, speak for yourself, you know. We see, every, we see uh, Krishna everywhere, we're in Vrindavan, wherever you are. Um, at one time, I don't know who it was who told Mahaprabhu. Or we used to tell this to Prabhupada, wherever you go is Vrindavan because Vrindavan's in your heart. So you bring Vrindavan wherever you go. And that was certainly the feeling we had with Prabhupada. That, I mean, it was nice to go to Vrindavan, but when Prabhupada came, definitely we felt we were in the spiritual world. There was no need to go anywhere. Okay, and one more. This one. Hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. Are you ready to hear it? This is, a, this is about hearing. And this is about hearing over and over again, something you already know, or at least you think you know. When I joined, Prabhupada lectured for eight days on You Are Not This Body. This is from this book, A Bond of Love. It's um, 600 pages of interviews with Prabhupada's female disciples. It's kind of thick, right? As you can see, I'm nearing the end. This is, uh, you should get this book and read it. It will, this book is important because I think it's important because Prabhupada's dealings with the women, especially, were very fatherly and very, very human. Very like what you could say, normal. I don't want to use the word normal, but I don't have a better word right now. Just say very human. Very affectionate, very fatherly, very caring, very concerned. And some people, when they read Prabhupada's books, they don't fully grasp that aspect of him. And so they look at some of the things he said, and I, said, I don't know about this. How can I accept him? This book is important because it shows the extremely caring, concerned, fatherly side of Prabhupada and how much um, affection he showed. Uh, just like a father. Not like, not like the Acharya of Iskand, but just like a, well, more like a grandfather. So anyway, that's why I would recommend this book amongst other things. But that's, that's one thing that you, that will come out of this book very strongly. 
And if they don't have it in Spanish, then what you could do is learn how to read English. And that would solve that problem, right? You know, if you know English, you have access to all the books. If you don't, then you have to wait for them to get translated. So, you know, it's probably it would take less time to learn English than it would to wait for all the books to be translated. I think, yeah. I feel sorry for all of you who don't read English. I cry every night thinking about all these books you can't read. That's sad. Anyway, they have they have these little machines you read you read into them and they come out in your language. So you could always do that. If you know how to read, if you could at least pronounce the words, then it'll come out in your you can dial in your local language. I use it in China. Hello, how are you? Ni hao. And then it plays it back. Ni hao. It's kind of fun. Okay, so now we're going to read this. One boy asked, we hear every day we're not this body. Can we go on to something else now? <laughs> what kind of fool would ask that at Prabhupada? He must have been very new or um, still coming down from LSD or something. He didn't really get it. Prabhupada said, have you realized you're not the body? The boy said, no. Prabhupada said, we will continue then. In other words, we will continue discussing we're not the body. So that uh, does not relate to what we're talking about, but I just thought that was important to read because I think we all sometimes want to get on to bigger and better things, get into the real nectar. Yeah, so if you, if you still think you're the body, then when you get into the real nectar, you'll be in big trouble because it could turn to poison if you're not careful. Yes. So um, I did not prepare another song and there are a few things that we haven't read about this song. So I'm going to bring up the Veda base and we're going to see what's left that we haven't read yet. Probably um, similar statements, which is and then we will um, uh, you know, we'll just expand upon. It's nice. So let's one thing we can do is now we can look at the context, you know, like what what is the context from which Prabhupada is quoting? So I'm going to share the screen. So this is a lecture. Let's go up to here. And that perfection can only be achieved by Krishna consciousness. This is probably a lecture put in the book. Not any material method. In other words, like Prabhupada would often say, there's nothing material that can stop your Krishna consciousness. I just read this morning, devotee was in um, a difficult situation and was asking Prabhupada, how can I be Krishna conscious? And Prabhupada said, understand that nothing material, there's nothing material that can stop you. Not that the situation wasn't difficult, but he just made that point so that you know, no matter how difficult it is, ultimately nothing material can stop you. It's, it's yourself. That's what Prabhupada meant. If you allow it to stop you, yeah. That perfection can be achieved only by Krishna consciousness, not any material method. If we want to be eternally blissful and full of knowledge, such as Ananda Bigdaha, from a Samhita 5.1, then we have to take to Krishna consciousness. There is no other way. As Lord Krishna says, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakto Mad Jiji Mam Namaskuru Mam Mevaishasi Dukdaivam Atmana Matrayana. If you don't know this verse by heart, you are a Hare Krishna loser. Big time. You should definitely know this. 
Always think of me, become my devotee, offer obeisances unto me and worship me. Without any doubt, you shall come to me. Simply four things. Is it difficult to think of Krishna, worship him, become his devotee, and offer obeisances to him? It is not difficult. No es difícil. As we are showing daily in our temples all over the world, we are thinking of Krishna by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. We are offering obeisances to the deity and at least trying to become his devotees. Devotees. And we are worshiping the Lord with fruits, flowers, incense, and so on. None of this is difficult. Anyone can collect a flower, a fruit, or a little water and offer to Krishna. So uh, th this underscores the point that Krishna consciousness is not difficult. What's difficult is us. We're difficult. Isn't it? The real problem is us, not the process. So Prabhupada's making the point. It's pretty simple. Flowers are everywhere. Water's everywhere. Fruit is everywhere. Uh, and leaf, tosi leaf. Um, if you grow Tulsi, then no problem. Um, very inexpensive, easy to do. Then where is the difficulty? The difficulty is our obstinacy. If one is obstinate, then becoming Krishna conscious is very difficult. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to look up the word obstinate to get a proper definition. You know, because when we have some words, we need to know what they mean exactly, right? Let's see what the definition. Stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. Very difficult to change or overcome. So basically, basically, it means Prabhupada saying, obstinate means I refuse to follow. That's what it means. If you're obstinate, so so what's the problem? Leaf, fruit, flower, water. Is that the problem? No, even if you're poor, there's flowers, there's water, there's fruits on the tree. What's the problem? Obstinate. I refuse. So nothing can stop our bhakti. Nothing material can stop it. The only thing that can stop it is our obstinacy. So remember that word, obstinate. What's the, what's the Spanish for that? Obst, uh, obst, uh, I have to make up a word. What's the Spanish, Talia? You have to, un, you have to unmute. Not unmuting. All right, then Rasika will tell us. Nobody can unmute, right? We're on some program where, all right, hold on, everyone. We'll just ask Google what's the word in Spanish? Obstinada. Obstinado. That's for men. They don't, they don't have, oh, we can hear it. Hold on. Obstinate. Uh, I want it in Spanish. Oh, here. Obstinado. Obstinado. Can you hear that? Obstinada. Obstinada. Obstinado. Obstinada. Yeah, remember that word. Take that word out of your dictionary. Throw it away, burn it up, send it to the moon. Obstinato. That's the only reason we're not Krishna conscious, because we refuse to change, we refuse to accept. I don't know if I I don't know if I can accept that. Oh great. So you can take another birth for like in the next billion years until you do accept it. You know, that's your option. So be smart. 
All problems stop when the kirtan starts. Don't forget that either. Hare Krishna. Sometimes when you're having a meeting and you're going nowhere, I take do kirtan. And everything will be just fine. Okay. So I have to go off of Google because it eats up bandwidth that my internet doesn't have so much of. Okay. So let's go back. I have to share the screen. Screen share. Okay, here it is. Human life is meant for worshiping Krishna. Narottam Das Thakur sings, Hori Hori Bipale Janama Gunainu. My life is spoiled. Why? Manusha Janama Paya Radha Krishna. Nabhajya, Janya Shunya Bisha Kainu. Having obtained, having attained a human birth, I failed to worship Radha Krishna and so have knowingly drunk poison. We are trying to stop people from drinking poison. The Krishna consciousness movement is for everyone's benefit. It is the topmost humanitarian movement to make everyone happy to make everyone immortal, to make everyone peaceful, to make everyone wise. Wow. Happy, immortal, peaceful, and wise. So that's an acronym, H-I-P-W. Now that doesn't work. How about H, I? well, no. It almost sounds like hippie, right? H-I-P, hipwa, hipwe. Yeah, we want to become hippies, happy, immortal, Peaceful, no, P-I-P, no, W-I-P-P, wipe, wipe, <laughs> wise, peaceful, no, there's only one P. All right, someone figure this out. I don't want to waste your time. But four things. If you put an acronym, then you remember it. Happy, immortal, peaceful, and wise. That sounds pretty good. You want to be happy, immortal, peaceful, and wise? Take this book. Krishna says that no, that one who does not surrender to him is naradham, the lowest. Instead of narotama, you're naradhamma, the lowest man, not the highest. Narotam means the highest. Naradhamma means the lowest. Oh, how is he naradhamma? He is M.A., Ph.D., D.H.C., T.H.C., how is he? I think Prabhupada's making these up just for fun, right? Is there such thing as a THC? Maybe in India, I don't know. I think Prabhupada's having fun. ABC, GBC, we're all servants of Krishna. How is he Naradham? Maya Parita Jnana. His knowledge has no value because he does not know Krishna. These MAs, PhDs will not help you. Krishna says, one who does not worship me has no knowledge. Why? Because if one remains obstinately adverse to surrendering to God, what is the value of his knowledge? He has no knowledge. So that's interesting. Don't you think that's interesting? So you're talking to this PhD scholar, Nobel laureate, you know, Harvard Emirates professor, and you say, excuse me, sir, um, I don't know if you know, but you have no knowledge. And he says, my dear boy, why do you say that? Because you're adverse to surrendering to God. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, bahunam jammanam ante jnanavan mam prapajite. Jnanavan, when you have knowledge, you surrender. Jnanavan. So how do we know who has knowledge? Those who surrender, they have knowledge. How do we know who's a fool? They don't surrender. That's the title of my next book, Intelligent Fools, Genius Fools. You find them all over the place, Genius Fools. They're so smart, they're going to remain in the material world forever. That's how smart they are. And when he surrenders to Krishna, he'll get out of the material world. He's smart or she's smart. 
ladies, don't let these people say you're less intelligent. These genius, there are plenty of genius fools around. You surrender to Krishna, you're the most intelligent by far. Okay. Therefore, Krishna says, Bahunam Jamanam Ante Gyanabam Mam Prapadyate. After many, many births of struggling to cultivate knowledge, one who is actually wise surrenders to Krishna. My dear Lord Krishna, for so long I had forgotten you, not knowing that my only business is to surrender to you. But today I surrender. Please protect me. That is intelligence. And the moment you surrender, you are protected. Lord Krishna says, here's another verse you should know. Sarvadharmam purtajamam ekam sharanam bhaja aham tam sarvapape diomakishami masucha. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. The Lord also promises, konteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashti. Another verse you should know by heart, unless you want to be a Hare Krishna loser, then you don't have to learn those verses. The Krishna conscious movement is trying to make fools and rascals and sinful men wise, and actually it is happening. Papi, tapi, yata, chilo, hurinam, udharilo, tara, sakshi, jagai, madhai. This is a famous song, and Prabhupada quotes this song often. And this means that Mahaprabhu uh, save the most sinful. And the example is Jagai and Madhai. Save the most sinful with the holy name. You want evidence? Look at Jagai and Madhai. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered two sinful brothers named Jagai and Madhai. Now you can see how strong is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. Many thousands of Jagais and Madhais are being delivered. So instead of saying, ladies and gentlemen, Maybe I should just say, my dear Jagais and Madhais, and Madhairinis. My dear Jagais, Madhais, and Jagarinis, and Madhairinis, welcome. I have to share what I'm reading. You're not privy to it. Okay. No, I wouldn't say that. That would be offensive. But um, Prabhupada said it, and it's true. We have, you're no longer Jagais and Madhais. We are no longer Jagais and Madhais, but we were. Given, we were giving Jagais and Madhais a run for their money, giving them some competition for being degraded. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is greater than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally delivered Jagai and Madhai, but now, by his movement, thousands of Jagais and Madhais, Madhais are being delivered. This is the practical evidence. Devotees were glorifying Prabhupada and... They said, Prabhupada, you're so great. You, you spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. You made so many people Krishna conscious. And Prabhupada put his head down and said, no, the holy name did that. He didn't want to take credit for it. It was the holy name. And then they said, but Prabhupada, you spread the holy name. And Prabhupada blushed. And he said, that may be true. And he was embarrassed, you know, to take credit for that. So Prabhupada gave all credit to his guru and the holy name. And this is important for us because you may feel like, well, how can I, this lowly man or woman who is not that spiritually advanced, how can I help other people become Krishna conscious? You don't have to do much. You just have to give the holy name. You know how many times Prabhupada said to become guru is not difficult. You simply repeat what Krishna said and then you're guru. Have you heard that before? He said, you know, like me, me become guru. I'm just like Bhaktin stupid, Bhakta Bozo. How can I become? I'm just Bhakta Burfi Bozo in person. You repeat what Krishna said, you become guru. That's it. Even Bhakta Bozo, even Bhakta Burfi can become guru. You repeat what Krishna said. So here, here is nice and Prabhupada is acknowledging. It, it's not that I spread Krishna consciousness, the holy name did everything. So if you can get the holy name, you can get people to taste the holy name. Then the holy name will do everything. And then you become an instrument, even though you may not feel yourself so great, but you become an instrument. You speak Krishna's words. And 
anyone who's intelligent, sincere, pious, and inclined towards genuine spiritual life, when they hear your message, they'll resonate with it. And they'll take up Krishna consciousness. And you can be the instrument for making many, many people Krishna conscious, even though you don't feel so qualified. Good news, right? Any of you have doubts? Raise your hands if you have a doubt. Because if you do, it's time to smash your doubts. And we could have a, or a show, you know, a YouTube channel called Smash Your Doubts. Bring up your doubts and we'll smash them. We'll dissipate them. We'll annihilate them. Yeah. So Prabhupada um, did not just say this once. He said it a lot. It's a very simple thing. You speak what Krishna has spoken, nothing else. You become guru. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to become guru. Me, become guru? It's not possible. Yeah. Prabhupada said, not a difficult thing. You repeat Krishna's message, you're guru. Of course, you have to follow what you're repeating. That's the difficult part. But still, we can do that. Okay, so there's a few more sentences to read. Lord Chaitanya's process is very easy. It is not very difficult. Anyone can take to it. But if we knowingly take poison, who can protect us? We appeal to everyone to take to the Krishna consciousness movement, chant the Hare Krishna mantra, even if you cannot give up your bad habits and sinful activities at once, still take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And before long, you will become purified and your life will be glorious. Srila Prabhupada Kije. So what are the four things? You remember the four things? Peaceful, happy, Wise. And what's the other one? I forgot. It starts with an I. Who remembers? Anyone remember? You have to put it in the chat. I don't think you can talk. We turned off your mics or something. Immortal. Oh, there you go. Peaceful. No. Um, yeah. Peaceful. Immortal. Happy. No. Um, why don't we do happy, immortal, did anybody get an acronym? Like, like you have you have an acronym? What's the acronym, Tanya? We need an acronym here that we can pronounce. We have P, we have I, we have H, and we have W. And we have to make an acronym. Whip, is that it? Whip. Yes. Whip yourself into transcendental shape. All right, we got it. Today's class is called Whip. Wise, happy, immortal, and peaceful. There we go. Now we can remember it. Why couldn't I think of that? It just proves women are more intelligent than men. I always knew it. Okay. <laughs> no, it proves Croatians are the most intelligent people on the planet. That's what it proves. Doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman child, they're the most intelligent. Whip yourself into transcendental shape. Okay. These are the four results of spreading Krishna consciousness. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastico. So we're going to go to the next. Going to go to the next. Uh -huh. This is from a lecture. I don't know if we read this before. Might be the same thing we just read. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes when you, you start, we get audio transcripts, they're the same transcripts of what we read in the books because the books were audio transcripts. Okay, let's try this. There is a slight chance that we're going to be reading something again.
but we won't know until we start reading. This is a test of your memory. Narotam Das Thakur. Sing. Narotam, not Narotam. Narotama Das Thak. Not, not Thakur, Thakur. Not Narotam Das Thakur. No, it's Narotam Das Thakur. Sings Hori Hori Bipale. Janama Gonainu. My dear Lord Krishna, I've simply wasted my time. Why? Did we read this? Because I received the human form of life, which is meant for understanding Krishna, yet I have simply wasted my time, not taking advantage of this opportunity. I've done everything but worship Radha and Krishna, and therefore I've taken poison knowingly. When one takes poison knowingly, he commits suicide. And not taking advantage of the human form is something like that. If we do not understand Krishna in this life, we are knowingly taking poison. This material life is just like a blazing forest fire. Eating, sleeping, enjoying sex, and defending are the main material activities. When we are engaged simply in these things, our hearts are always burning as if we had taken poison. How can we be cured? Golo kera prema dhana hori nam shankirtana. Latina janmilo kene toy. Or if you're Bengali, you have to say Golo kera prema dhan hori nam hori nam shankirtan. Ratina janmilo kene toy. Something like that. You put a gulab jamun in your mouth and then you speak. And that's how you learn pronounce Bengali. Did you know that? You just you just read it with a gulam jaman in your mouth, and that's your Bengali accent. My dear Lord, you have given us the medicine of Hari Nang Shankirtan, the chanting of Hare Krishna. Unfortunately, I have no attraction for your holy names. What could be more unfortunate? And this um, song continues. Brojendra non dona je, shochi shuto hoilo se, balalam hoilo nitoi. Krishna has now come as Sri Chaitana Mahaprabhu, the son of Mother Sachi, and Balaram has come as Lord Nityananda. This is Kali Yuga's their age. It's not the age of Krishna and Balaram, it's the age of Gaur and Nitai, and Gaur and Nitai pulled Krishna Balaram off the altar. Did you know that? I said, get down, boys. It's our time. It's our age. They pulled him off the altar. Sachi, Mata had a dream. Pulled them off. They were fighting. Oh, you, you don't have a right to pull me off the altar. Yes, we do. It's our age. They pulled them off the altar. Now they've come. Because to worship Krishna and uh, Balaram, it requires some qualification. To worship Mahaprabhu, just mercy, just faith. That's all. What is their business? They're delivering all kinds of sinful men simply by chanting Hare Krishna. And what is the evidence of this? The evidence is that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu delivered the sinful Jagai and Madhai. So Prabhupada, again, is repeating what he we read last time. At the present moment, everyone is like Jaghai and Madhai, for everyone is intoxicated and mad after sex. I don't know, I'm starting to think people now are worse than Jaghai and Madhai. I could be wrong, but they were pretty bad, but I think in some ways we're actually worse than they are. They were worse in the breath. I mean, they did a lot of bad things, but... I think in some ways, some aspects, we may be worse. Now, by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, thousands of Jagais and Madhais are being delivered. It is this active medicine, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra that is doing it. It is the perfect yoga system. So let's see um, what's here. If, um, if we've read this 
before. This is a different song. So we'll begin reading here. And another song, Narottam Das says, Hori Hori, Hori Hori Pipale, Janama Ganainu. Anyone who does not approach Radha Krishna through a relationship with Nitananda has uselessly spoiled his life. Vritta means useless. Janma means life. Tara means his. Sambanda means relationship. So this is from the song. It's from another song. Uh, so I think maybe then the next class we can do this song. Anyone who does not make a relationship with Nitananda is simply spoiling the boon of his human form of life. Why is he spoiling it? Se Pashu Bada Dalachar. Se means that, Pashu means animal, and Dalachara means misbehaved or the most misbehaved. Without elevation to Krishna consciousness, through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Nitananda, life is simply spoiled for the animal propensities of sense gratification. Narottam Das says that ordinary animals can be tamed. But when a human being is animalistic, having only animal propensities, he is most horrible, for he cannot be tamed. Ordinary cats and dogs, or even a tiger can be tamed. But when a human being goes out of his way and neglects to take to the human activity of Krishna consciousness, his higher intelligence will simply be misused for animal propensities. And it is very difficult to tame him. The enactment of state laws cannot make a thief an honest man because his heart is polluted. He cannot be tamed. Every man sees that a person who commits criminal offenses is punished by the government. And also in scriptural injunctions, punishment in hell is mentioned. But despite hearing from scripture, and seeing the action of the state laws, the demoniac cannot be tamed. Hare Krishna. So, uh, let's see if there's anything else I could read. I think these are probably, could be repeats. Let's go down to here. Oh yeah, that's, we just read that. Anyway, let's read this. What is your favorite bhajan? Chumuna asked. What is yours, Prabhupada returned? Lord Chaitanya's Sikshashtakam prayers. My favorite, said Prabhupada, is Hari Hari Bipali. He recited the gist of the prayer in English. Oh Lord Hari, I have spent my life uselessly. Although I have taken this rare human birth, I have not worshipped Radha and Krishna. And so I have knowingly drunk poison. There is so much depth of meaning in Narottam Das Thakur's prayers. That's Prabhupada saying that. Purushottam, this is Prabhupada's servant. Once Prabhupada was sitting alone in his room, I walked by and I heard him singing a prayer. I'd never heard before. I heard him singing a prayer I'd never heard before. And I went in. Of course, everyone knows he sings. He can sing very beautifully, very greatly inspired. But I never heard him sing as beautifully as he did that one time. I heard him sing many, many times in many temples. But I never heard him sing as beautifully as this. I felt very honored to hear it, very privileged. It was beautiful. When he was done, he just got up and said, let's go now. The crop, crop I used to do. Crop I used to do like that. Uh, yeah, I think Prop I was living the prayers. You know, when he was 
singing it. I mean, it's like, you know, I read this story where I think I told you uh, one devotee heard Prabhupada singing from the outside, but periodically he would stop and he'd be crying and he'd sing some more and cry and sing. So, you know, you, you know, when you love somebody, there's a lot of emotion. What to speak when you love Krishna? How much emotion is there? Right? It's just incredible. 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 So, we are going to take preguntas. Pregunta. Tengo una prabo ji. Tengo una pregunta. Por favor. Una pregunta, por favor. Una? Is that correct? Una pregunta, por favor. Okay. So we go to the chat and we'll see what's happening. Your husband wants the bond of love in Spanish? Well, there is one way he can get it in Spanish. You can translate. Or just read, you know, there must be some Google app, some app now. You just read it in and it all comes out Spanish. Okay. Don't forget to whip yourself into action. So this is from Krishna Karshner. Um, I have doubts if to become a guru, repeating what our guru is enough. Many other things are required. Nowadays, guru has to also be a good psychologist. Yeah. Um, funny you should say that, Krishna Karshani, because part of the reason uh, I was late to class this morning is because I was dealing with some problem from a guru who is not a good psychologist that fortunately his disciple understood his limitations. And um, I don't know how to say this, but intelligently didn't follow what he said, because if she did, she would have, uh, it would have been really bad for her. But she knew that and she didn't expect him to know. And uh, so, yeah, I'm well aware of that. And uh, this girl has so much faith in the holy name. He was telling her that she has a very, very, very deep tra trauma in her life. And he was saying, well, just chant Hare Krishna. It will solve everything. And um, this trauma has been with her for a long time. So she's actually solving it. And of course, she's a devotee. She's chanting, but additional additional things. So yeah, I'm aware of that. When, when um, I, I think there's two things you could say about this. It's... When Prabhupada saying become guru, it doesn't mean diksha guru, it means become a teacher. And so I may not be able to solve everyone's problems if those problems are outside the purview of devotional service. Just like a disciple may come to me and say, I have a stomach ache, Guru Maharaj, what should I do? And I say, uh, let me think, uh, how about a doctor? What do you think? Good idea? So because I'm not a doctor, I have to say, go to a doctor. Or I may know something about stomach aches, like, well, just don't eat for a day or take this medicine. But um, could be more serious, right? So when you are instructing, then you have to know what, your, what, what are your boundaries, what are your perimeters of what you can instruct and can't. So when Prabhupada's saying it's very easy to become a guru, just repeat what Krishna's saying, He's saying it's very easy to give the siddhanta because the siddhanta is there. You digest it, understand it, deliver it. But in terms of solving people's practical problems and what may not be a problem within the purview of your training from Guru Shastra and Sadhu, then you have to understand that. Now, some gurus are more well-equipped to do that. And some are at least equipped to know what would, what would require a spiritual solution and what would require some other solution. So, so we have to understand the context of what Prabhupada's saying. Um, you know, there's no, like in the Bhagavatam, there's so many conversations. And, you know, there are conversations about Siddhanta and stories. And it's not like, you know, it's not like they're dealing, you know, Parikshit, Parikshit Maharaj is saying, well, you know, a lot of people today are addicted to their cell phones. I don't know what we're going to do. No, that's not the conversation. No. A lot of people today have low self-esteem. You know, what should we do, Sukadeva Goswami? That's not the discussion. So 
Swami Prabhupada saying being guru, you know, represent the discussion, the siddhanta. And then other things can be dealt with by other people. Just like some gurus, wisely, especially renunciates, when there are grihastas have problems, they send them to a grihasta couple who's capable and qualified to deal with it, rather than try to deal with it themselves. So it's not, it's not, it's it's an advantage if you are a guru and can counsel grihastas and guide them. Um, it's not a disadvantage if you have somebody who's qualified on your team who can do it, then they do it, and you understand that they, they'll do it better, or you can't do it at all. So that's what Prabhupada means. Now, you might say, but look at Prabhupada dealt with all those problems. That's what a guru has to deal with. It's true he did, but a guru can set up a system where others deal with it, if he doesn't have the time or feel capable. Then you have, well, then, then the other side of that argument is, well, in the Christian religion, they have pastoral counselors who, and all uh, what a pastoral counselor is, is someone who understands psychology within the context of the theology of their religion so that they can help people with psychological problems within the context of the teachings of their scriptures. That's a pastoral counselor. So that, that arised from the realization in the church that many of the problems that the congregation, that the congregants have or were having were not in and of themselves spiritual problems, but psychological. But if they went to the secular psychologist, it, the secular psychologist don't understand the theology, and so it would be better if those who understand the theology, the priests, the pastors, and so forth, were also psychologists, and so that they could guide within the context of their own teachings. So that's what pastoral counseling, that's how it came about. They may not, I don't know if they're equipped with, with all the tools of the trade of an ordinary psychologist, but many of them, but it's, you know, it's with respect to the teachings of scripture. So yeah, certainly that's needed, if not by the guru himself, but someone on his team. And it's it's okay not to know something, as long as you know you don't know it. The problem is when you don't know something and you think you know it and you start talking about it, when you really have no idea, because it's a much deeper or more complex subject than you realize. And you might think, oh, that's simple. Um, if it's so simple, why do people have PhDs in it? Well, sometimes the PhDs are, you know, analyzing minutia, just details that have nothing to do with, with a lot of the problems people face. That's true. But in the areas of psychology, you know, if people have studied something in depth, probably they know more than we do about the causes and cures. Not always, we can say, you know, they misunderstand, but it, it's just some, something obviously to think about that there is a science there. And, I, and I'm pontificating on a science that I, I don't know much about. It can be dangerous. So I have to be a little careful. And um, you don't know what you know and know what you don't know. That's always good. And if you don't know, just tell someone, you know, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a brain surgeon, I'm not a neurologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. Um, I understand something about psychiatry and psychology. It sounds something like this, but you should go to someone who knows. Or if you do know, then that's fine. Then talk about it. Then you can help them. That's my two cents. Is that okay? So you, you can all become gurus, but just know your limitations. Then it's okay. Know what you know and know what you don't know. Do what you can do. Don't do what you can't do. Jyotirmai says, in Orthodox Church, to become a priest, you have to go to university for something like four years, and you get training also. Yeah, and pastoral counseling is, is part of the training. Uh, addiction needs psychology. Yeah. yeah. We, but we're also... It's also interesting because the problems that people have today have today are, of course, similar 
but, but uh, in some ways different and new from problems that people had in the past or the, the problems are more pervasive today. So then as things change, then the teachers, the gurus, the pastors have to become more equipped because now society is altered. And so young people are having certain problems that perhaps they didn't used to have, or they didn't have much, or they didn't have them that deeply. And now you have to have some idea how to deal with them. Does that make sense? Does that make rupees? Does that make gold coins? Yeah. Um, th this, is, um, this is very important. Society is always changing. And so the philosophy doesn't change, but how it's applied, how it's delivered, administered changes according, accordingly so that people can digest it and accept it and use it. Right? And, you know, there's this idea that, well, you know, this is how Prabhupada did it, so we don't have to change anything. We should just do it the way he did. And that's very, very true. But details may have to change according to time and circumstance. You know, if you water down too much, you lose the potency. And I've seen that happen in ISKCON. We lost the potency. And the result is you don't expand because there's, it's like you're feeding people food that has no nutrients in it. So you don't want to water it down. You want to give the message, but you also want to understand the thinking of people. So you, you figure out what door to get in their mind to get that message through, because those things change. I think I told you before, um, when, of course, when Prabhupada came, it was a very revolutionary time. And, uh, the hippies were considered anti-establishment. So anti-establishment meant anti-materialism. <clears throat> but there was also social movements against the war and, and political movements. They're all kind of part of that hippie thing, but not all hippies were political. But it was, it was anti. It was just anything that stood for American values or Western values. The hippies were against it, just without even analyzing if it was good or bad, they were just against it, everything. That was the mood, right? So if you give a class in 1967, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, and say, all the leaders are fools, people are like animals, that just resonated with everybody. Go, yeah, they're all a bunch of pigs. You know, we used to call the police pigs. So if you say, you know, Leaders are like pigs. Go, yeah, there's just a bunch of pigs, you know. It wouldn't turn anybody off. In fact, it would inspire them. I like you guys. You're down on everything. I like you. And then you get into the 80s and people say, you guys are so negative. You're down on everything. Right? So that very same message that was bringing in the hippies uh, threw all the yuppies away because the yuppies wanted BMWs and nice condos and you know, just add spirituality to their life. It was a different, where the hippies want to throw it all away. They didn't want it. Same message, right? Right? So, the, but you have to adapt the message to the mentality. And now there's a different mentality, especially with COVID. Now you can say the world's a pretty bad place and people agree. Pre-COVID, it was harder, wasn't it? It was a little harder to get that message across. So, so um, to be effective in communication, uh, what do you learn in your public speaking class? Know the audience, right? Isn't that like, isn't like the ABCs of public speaking? Know your audience. And then, and then if you go to different countries, it's different also. say the word God in America, you might get a pie thrown in your face. Don't say the God word. They won't like you. you know, it's like, what's that all about? You know? well, just say divine. You'll be, if you say divine, no pies in your face. They'll like you. If you say God, they'll run out. Okay, we understand people have been traumatized by um, fanatical re religious people, by um, fanatical religion in general. So, you know, 
gods associated with those fanatical religions. You know, we have a bumper sticker in America. Um, Jesus, some, like Jesus, I like Christianity. The thing I just don't like your followers. That's the I have problem with them, not with you know Christianity in general. So, yeah, so we have to be aware of these things. Is that okay? Is that more than okay, or just okay? Is it para okay, super okay, or just? Is it kanishta okay, majjhima okay, or uttama okay? I hope it's uttama okay. It's ma okay, grande okay, muy grande okay. Okay, so then we can go on to the next. Um, Krishna Karshani says, seems grihastas are supposed to be gurus for grihastas. It's more healthy for both. Yeah, it's harder for grihastas. Yeah, it depends, you know. I think if someone is very elevated in Krishna consciousness, then everyone will be attracted to them. The grihastas, the renunciates, everyone. But in our Gaudiya Vaishnava movement, from the time of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, most gurus were sannyasis. So that kind of became a culture. When I became a guru, some people thought I was bogus because I was a grihasta and the grihastas can't be gurus. Generally, grihasta gurus will be, will obviously have more experience to guide grihastas. But there are some sannyasis that give very good advice to grihastas. That there are some sannyasis that even know more about grihasta life than even grihastas. They just have that intuition, and there's some sannyasis that don't. And so again, it goes back to that, you know, if you know what you know, then you can speak it. But if you know you don't know, then don't, because you'll create more trouble. And because someone's a guru, you know, and someone's a teacher, it, 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 there, there is this thinking that, like, I should know everything about everything, even the things I don't know, I should just talk about them, just so people will have faith. We, we learned something really important, and I think I've told you this before. If someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, just say, there is an answer, but I don't know it, or I'm not the best person to answer this question, or I don't have experience with this because I'm not married, or whatever. And then say, I will, I will put you in touch with someone who can answer you, or I will speak to them, and when you come next week, I'll give you the answer. And you know what, you know what happens? People's respect for you goes through the roof because they see this humility and vulnerability and they appreciate it because that's a spiritual quality, right? right? So if you give an answer and it's the wrong answer just because you're supposed to know everything because you're Guru Dave and Guru Dave knows everything, that's um, cheating actually. So you can be humble and say, well, I'm a new devotee, I don't know this, or I'm not married, I don't know this, or I've, and I've never been there, I haven't studied this history. You know, someone will ask you a question, well, you know, during the Roman and Greek times when this happened and that happened, it's like, sorry, I don't know anything about that. Can you summarize it for me, give me the gist of it so I could comment on it, or give me a week and I'll read about it, something like that. You'll be surprised how much respect you get from people when you're just honest. They respect it. We think, no, they're not going to respect me because I don't know the answer. They will respect you more when you tell them I don't know the answer. You'd be amazed. If you don't believe me, try it out. It works. Okay. Next question. Or statement. The main problem of ISKCON is that we don't adjust the message. People have changed. We have to find a way to deliver them. Yeah, when you go fishing, put bait on that the fish will eat, not the bait that you like. Um, there, it's a you know, it's really a balance because after Prabhupada left, I would say maybe six years after Prabhupada left. A lot of those were thinking, okay, we need to make changes in ISKCON, the world is changing this and that. And 
an interesting thing happened, which was we made changes that really watered down what Prabhupada gave us. We, um, and we went down, down the tubes, so to speak. And it was only then when we got back on board with the basics that Prabhupada gave us, you know, book distribution went way down, new devotee making went way down, all these things, all these things. We can't do this anymore. That was a different era. People aren't joining now. It all went down. And the smart devotees realized, actually, the only thing that went down was our faith in Prabhupada's instructions. If you look at how devotees are made today, if you look at how books are distributed today, it is much, much different than in the old days. You know how we made devotees in the old days? You'd come to the temple, we'd see you're interested, we'd say, come in my office. And we would keep you in that office all day and just talk to you until you, and then like, you know, until you want to stay, why don't you just stay tonight, you know, just for tonight. Um, and then, and now I have to go and say, and then you'd say something, okay, I'll take you home. And I go, when are we going to go? Well, about 10 minutes, 10 minutes comes, uh, 20 minutes, you know, that you just go all day till it's like, well, it's kind of too late to take you home. It's not safe. Why don't you just stay tonight? I mean, that's how we made devotees. And we made lots of them that way. All shaved up and dhotis, jumping up and down like popcorn on the street. Lots and lots. In fact, in one year in Los Angeles, New Dwarka, that the Bhakti program started with that strategy, 100 men joined the temple the year before two joined. So after Prabhupada left, we look at that and say, we don't want to make devotees that way. We don't want to distribute books, the hard sell. Excuse me, sir, can I give you, can you give a donation? How much? Oh, whatever you want. Do you have a 20? I'll give you change. They give you the 20. Could you just leave 20? A lot of people are given 100. Thanks a lot. Put it in the pocket, shake his hand and leave. Like you want to distribute books like that the rest of your life? No, of course not. So there was this pendulum, like, so devotee, you know, books, we stopped distributing lots of books, stopped making lots of devotees because the methodology didn't work. And then smart devotees thought, okay, we can do it better. Society is different now. Like now, everybody knows about yoga, karma, meditation. You know, in 1970, when I give out a book, it's about Meditation, you heard of meditation? Yeah, it's kind of yoga, yeah, something, I don't know, karma, I don't know, what's that? Vegetarianism, no, I wouldn't do that, you die, you need protein. That's what we were dealing with. So now it's much different. So you can't, you can't water down the basics and you can't water down the philosophy, you just have to know how to administer it to people. So that's the mistake we made. We threw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, this is a bad method of distributing books. So then now what do we do? Don't distribute them. Bad method of making devotees. What do we do? Don't make them. So that's what we went through. So it's, it's you have to, we all have to adjust without compromise. And you know what's so good about today in the world? There's so many things you don't have to explain because people already understand them. And there's, there's so many things you don't even have to try to convince them logically because so many people already, you know, you've heard of karma, right? Yeah, it goes around, comes around. Yeah, they already, like most young people, yeah, 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 I know that. You're like, you, you don't have to explain it. Just go on to the next thing. They already understand most of it. You heard about meditation, meditation school. Yeah, I do a little meditation. We, we just did a program last night at Krishna House, maybe like 30 guests. And... Of the 30 guests, 27 practice meditation. Is that interesting or is that interesting? 27 of them, college students coming to Krishna House, practice meditation already. That's amazing. Well, for me, it's amazing. I don't know. It wasn't that way when I joined. Uh, anyway, I hope that addresses your yeah, this is this is something Krishna Krishna I was thinking about that we threw the baby out with the bathwater. So we have to make the adjustment, but still give the nutritious meal. You know, make it taste good, but keep it nutritious. Okay. Today morning a devotee crying told me he regrets to not be so pure because devotees do not follow his example. He's an authority. I did not know how to reply to him. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, that's a nice sentiment. Like if I were more pure, people would follow me. That's true. Um, but I mean, one thing you can discuss and say, well, you are as pure as you are. And it's like in the next, you know, three weeks, you're not going to be like that much more pure or three years even. So how can you inspire devotees? And then you start to understand you inspire them through affection, through acceptance, through through compliments, appreciation, encouragement, finding services they like. So, um, and you'd have to do that anyway, even if you were pure. I mean, we're not going to be as pure as Prabhupada. You just, you know, look at Prabhupada and go, I surrender. That's it. Whatever you want me to do. Where is the building you want me to jump off of? You know, that's what it was like with Prabhupada. You know, I cry like that also. I, I you know, my, my prayer to Krishna is people just see me and they start chanting. You know, I just want to walk down Fifth Avenue and everybody goes, Hare Krishna, just by seeing me. You know, so I'll just walk all day. You know, I'll make the world Krishna conscious walking. But um, require I need to do some more work before that happens, right? That's the Mahabhagwa. Do you ever think like that, any of you? Like, I wish people would just see me and become a devotee. Now they see me and they become a demon, you know. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> now they see me and they run across the street. They don't, you know. Well, that could be okay also, you know, like attraction and aversion, opposites. Um, Krishna Karshan says, my point was that it's easier for Grihastu to approach Grihastu Guru with very private problems. It's that is true. Approach a sannyasi can be awkward, yeah. So when I get, Krishna Karshan, when I get fed up dealing with Grihastu problems, I'm going to take sannyas. That will be my message. No more Grihastu problems, I'm sannyasi. Don't touch me with that stuff. Let me die in peace. Yeah. Now, but I have a good system now. My wife just deals with it. She's much better at it. The other day I went to jump off a bridge. No, Gopinath. I went to jump up and down at the temple. It was awesome. Long time without hurrying on affection affection about Yeah, we need, we need, you need to get this shirt, Gopinath, or make a poster out of it. You got one? Let's see yours. I didn't see it. What's yours? Krishna is the one in front of the zeros. Yeah, that's another one of our shirts. Yeah. That example Prabhupada gave. Did you put the, um, okay, here's the, here's what it is. This is what I, I think this is the site. Sattva apparel. Is that how you spell apparel? Is it? Up here, or is it two R's and one P? I think I got all A's on my spelling test. Don't think I don't know how to spell. I just forgot everything after the test. That's my problem. I swear I got A's on all my spelling tests, but I don't have long term memory. So, and now I've been spoiled by you know autocorrect. Anyway, however, you spell apparel is that right? Anybody know? Uh Tanya already posted the site. Um, is, double P. is that right, Tanya? Is that how you spell apparel or no? A P P or is it two R's? No, oh, that's correct. All right. My memory's not as bad as I thought. Okay, well, you have it again. You can design your own shirts by color and size, and you get sweatshirts, t-shirts, bottles, bags, and aprons. What more could you ask for? How do you Okay, so we have more questions. And we only have five minutes. Okay, so all of you know, that day you see me in Saffron, no more Grihasta problems. Then I will have that written on my Korta. For Grihasta problems, go to, um, what's that website? GrihastaVisionTeam.com. That'll be the shirt I wear in for the first year. All right. Uh, and so Gopinath says, you got to jump up and down, right? Yeah, I think so. We had an amazing kirtan last night. And um, this old man here was dancing like the 20-year-olds, so I'm, I'm good. It's my, my main goal in life is to dance. Never stop dancing. We have a, another shirt. It says, never stop dancing except to take prasadam. 
Prabhupada said that actually. Um, amazing real stories from the past. You all were incredible distributors for Prabhupada's books. Yeah, well, sometimes it was difficult to do it. Yeah. My spread, sh spread shop. It's not shirt. You sure? Spread shop. Okay. Well, let's get rid of that. How do you get rid of it? You can't, right? All you can do is write it over again. Anyway, spread shop, not spread shirt. You sure? It's not spread shirt? She's sure. Okay. You're hired, Tanya. I need somebody to follow me and correct all my mistakes. Okay. This is from Alexandra. You inspire devotees by your activities. Words doesn't count. Everyone can speak beautiful words, but the actions, they count. How they say it. Walk your talk. Yeah, it's called acharya. That's what acharya means. By your actions. Lord Chaitanya said, some devotees act properly, but don't speak, don't know the philosophy. Some know the philosophy, but don't act properly. You talk Haridas, you both know the philosophy and you act properly. Perfect. Okay. My dear devotees, you're going to begin Japa in two minutes. And I had this beautiful thought to share with you on Japa, and I can't remember what it was. But it was beautiful, and it still is beautiful. It's just somewhere floating around. So um, maybe in the next two minutes, I'll remember what it is. It was a beautiful thought. What was it? Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to meditate now on that thought and see if it comes up, and then we will start in a few minutes. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> 